explan it's a, it's a little bit like the explanations the uh, the Greeks were satisfied. You know, Aristotle explained falling bodies by saying they're going to their natural place, which is toward the, toward the center of the earth. Well, when you say that, you really haven't learned anything more about falling bodies. It hasn't helped you to say that. And in the same way, talking about a god who is compl complex and created the world the way it is, you haven't learned anything. It doesn't help you to anticipate anything you'll discover That's in nature. Right. But I don't think one should underestimate uh, the fix we're in, that in the end, we will not be able to explain uh, the world, that uh, we will have some laws of, some set of laws of nature, we will not be able to derive them on the ground simply of mathematical consistency, because we can already think of mathematically consistent laws that don't describe the world as we know it. And we will always be left with a um, question, why are the laws of nature what they are rather than some other laws? And uh, I, I don't see any way out of that, and I, I just regard it as just another one of the tragedies that we have to get used to, uh, like the tragedy that we will die, and the tragedy, that, well, I don't want to uh, linger on tragedy, but uh, I think essentially the position of human beings is a tragic one, uh, and the more we understand, the more clearly tragic it is. And um, part of it, which particularly affects a physicist, is the tragedy of never being able to come to a really satisfying conclusion of our questions, why? And uh, per, you know, what do we do in, in, in this tragedy? I think, uh, well, Shakespeare showed us that one way of living with tragedy is to mix it in with comedy. Yes, yes. And um, uh, we can have we can take a certain amusement at our position, always seeking why, 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 never coming to the end. Um, I think humor is one of the leavening agents that uh, makes our tr the tragedy of our position uh, possible. Uh, the Greeks, in writing their plays, didn't understand that, that you could mix comedy and tragedy. Yeah. There, there's no comedy in, in Sophocles, um, but Shakespeare understood, and I think that's what's so great about Shakespeare. I think Shakespeare. that's right. I mean, I, I mean moving to, the, to another level, I, I love the comic novels of Douglas Adams. Uh, have you read any of his? No. Oh, no. well, I think you might like them, because he uses comedy, mm -hmm. but in a, a rather sophisticated scientific way, and so, and so his jokes Will, would really appeal to a, a modern physicist who, who understands... Well, I've heard uh, of the one, you know, what is the the secret of everything, it's 43 or... No, no, yeah, they're, they're, they're much, much better than that. I mean, I, um, I can't well, think of any of that. No. I, you, might, you, you, you might enjoy it. But going back to the, to the tragedy of never finally understanding, I mean, you're making pretty good progress working your way back through the first three minutes and, mm -hmm. and getting, where, where are you now, to the first picosecond or, oh, or it's, something? It's, uh, we don't, I mean, if our present... There's so many powers of ten that I, I don't even know what English word to apply to yes. it. But uh, I mean, we certainly uh, uh, can directly observe the universe as it was when it was 380,000 years old. That's the microwave radiation that uh, comes to us uh, essentially undisturbed from that time. And that's been a great success story in cosmology, the detailed analysis of this radiation that fills the universe. And it's not quite uniform everywhere. It's the non-uniformities that are so interesting. Um, and so important for what happened later, of course. Yes, yeah. well, they, that, they are the non-uniformities that ultimately grew into uh, the proto-galaxies and then galaxies and then clusters of galaxies and uh, allowed us to, to arise. Um, but looking back earlier than the first 380,000 years old, we, we have theories, and the theories work. In fact, uh, uh, some of our theories that describe what happened when the universe was three minutes old uh, tell us the chemical composition with which the stars started. And that, that works too. I mean, the predictions come out right. Uh, there's a certain amount of hydrogen, a certain amount of helium, a certain amount of 
certain rare isotopes of hydrogen and helium, helium-3 and hydrogen-2, that uh, we can calculate the amounts, and that's what we observe in the oldest stars. So that actually, uh, more accurately, that's what we observe in uh, the intergalactic material out of which the stars form. Uh, so in terms of things we can actually observe, I suppose you could say we've traced the history of the universe back to the first three minutes. Um, earlier than that, it's just pure theory, except that the, these non-uniformities in the microwave radiation, which are so important, which we're studying with radio telescopes, and which we believe, and have every reason to believe, grew into the distribution of matter we see in the sky, these non-uniformities, we, we believe we have a theory for their origin in terms of a pre-Big Bang phase called the period of inflation. And it works. That is, it, it predicts certain properties. For example, the, the strength of the fluctuations as a function of how large they are. Um, what's the probability of seeing a fluctuation this big as compared to one that big? Uh, that theory works, and it deals with a period of time which is incredibly uh, early in the history of the universe. So, much, so early that you really begin to wonder whether there really was a beginning or, or should you even talk about a beginning. I mean, it's so... I don't even know how to say how early it is, but it's, it's way earlier than the first hundred... 380,000 years or the first three minutes, it's, uh, it's an incredibly small fraction of a second after the beginning. And that, those theories seem to work. But, you know, that's only going back so far. Then you, you have to go back to what started inflation, what started this inflationary period. And we have theories. Uh, there are some attractive theories, but they can't be tested. We don't have any observational handle on them. Even without an observational handle, however, if you've got a theory which is even plausible, I'd be grateful for that. Uh, well, there is a theory of chaotic cause, uh, inflation uh, due to Andre Linde at Stanford that um, there are certain fields, uh, they're the kind of fields we encounter in our modern theories of elementary particle physics. They're known technically as scalar fields that fill the universe, and essentially they, they're chaotic at the beginning. They're, one does not impose any particular initial condition on the universe. Uh, it's just as complicated as you can imagine, which is a nice uh, beginning because you don't have to fine-tune any initial conditions. And uh, this burbles on, and it, it, the Flux, you have fluctuations which are continually increasing and decreasing. It's all very complicated. Every once in a while, uh, surely by accident, a patch of this fluctuating field become, happens to become smooth. That is, it, it doesn't vary much over a sufficiently large region of space, just by accident, not be, by any design. That region you can show according to a reasonable dynamical assumptions, will then blow up, will inflate, will increase in size exponentially, becoming smoother and smoother, turning into the inflationary phase, which we think preceded our Big Bang. But this didn't just happen once. It happened again and again, and perhaps time without end. And uh, our Big Bang that we are, that, that is all we can observe directly, that is 13.7 billion years old, and we now know that number to 1%. Right. Um, that Big Bang is just one episode in a chaotic universe which is always burping off these Big Bangs. So does that mean there are lots of universes then? There are well, what we call a universe, our Big Bang, there are lots of them. I mean, I guess for linguistic purity, one should reserve the word universe for the uh, whole uh, thing, uh, yes, the whole okay. shebang.